Hi, I'm Christina Williams. I'm Janae Bowen. I'm Allison Andrews. And I'm Savannah Patterson. And today we're going to talk about the evolution of the horse. So just to kind of set the stage for y'all, this is occurring in North America in the Midwest. And it's about starting about 60 million years ago. And then just so you know, the environment is kind of a forest at this point. So when most people think of horse evolution, they think of orthogenetic evolution, uh, which is more of like a linear structure where they started very small and they got bigger. This did occur, but however, if there are many overlapping branches of horse evolution as this phylogenetic trace shows, and some, it, some um, lineages became extinct before the others. Um, we're going to focus on the lineage that lasted the longest. To begin this lineage, we will start with the Eohippus, which was first observed around 60 million years ago. Um, it was a four-toed horse that was about 12 inches in height, and it actually resembled a fox terrier dog. And its rear foot had three similar toes with remnants of the first and the fifth toes. And as you can see here in the foot structure, this would be what the uh, Eohippus foot would look like. So you can see all four digits, and this would represent the forelimb. And then the next horse that we're going to focus on is the Orohippus. And scientists aren't exactly sure when this horse um, started to come about, but um, it had uh, the fifth toe in the hind limb disappeared, and it still had four limb, uh, four digits in the forelimb. And however, the middle digit becomes more prominent, so the first and the third digits are starting to raise up in the limb, and it stood about 13 and a half inches in height, and Around the time that the orohippus um, occurs, there's also the first dramatic temperature change. So there was a huge increase in temperature, which caused the environment that the orohippus lived in to become a more tropical forest. So the diet that they were eating was now uh, more rich, leafy greens. And if you look in the skull structure here, you can see that it was very small. So this is five centimeters here, and in comparison, that will be the whole skull of the orohippus. And as she was talking about, since the temperature change created more of a leafy green environment, if you look over here, the tooth anatomy of this horse would be, they had small teeth, they were unsubmitted because there was, um, the leafy greens were very like soft on their teeth, so <coughs> it wasn't hard. And then, the next horse that we're going to talk about is the Mesohippus, and that's this one right here, and that was about 40 million years ago. Um, this horse was about <coughs> the size of a collie dog, going from 18 inches to about 24 inches, so it's like gradually getting bigger. Um, there's now three digits on both the fore and the rear of the foot, and this is, horse is more adapted for speed, and we're kind of going to get into that because this horse was known as the transitional form between the two environments of the tropical forest that was kind of appeared in the 50 million years ago to the next big temperature change, which was about 35 million years ago. And in that temperature change, the temperature dropped again so that all this forest land now became grasslands. So the horse didn't have as much coverage from the trees and so it had to become faster and therefore losing some of its toes so that it can escape from its predators. As she said, this is a picture of the foot structure of what the mesohippus foot would have looked like at the time. It has the three digits, but as you can see, these are starting to structure. And next we have the Mariochippus. Oh, Mariochippus. <laughs> um, and these horses were around about 25 million years ago. And as you can see by this foot structure right here, they have one solid toe and these other two digits are starting to get shorter. Um, this horse marks the transition form horse like uh, of these past, uh, these horses mark the transition form from horse like forms of the past with short crown unsmitted teeth to true horses with long crown fully cemented molars and premolars. So as you can see they're starting to grow because of the change of environment and what they were eating. As Janae said um, when she pointed out the foot structures this would probably be the best representation of the Marichippus foot because like she said, you can still see the two smaller digits but the one prominent toe. And as well in the skull structure, you can still see how they're gradually getting larger in their jaw size. And we will move on to the Philohippus. Um, it was the official one-toed horse and it's also the direct ancestor of um, the 
prehistoric horses of Eurasia, and it stood at a height of about 40 inches. So as she was saying, since it is the first one-toed horse, as you can see over here, this is the picture that would best describe it. And you can kind of see how the other two toes have drawn up and they're becoming vestigial structures. Right, and this vestigial structures become the splint bones in the horse. And as you can see on this side, this would be an x-ray of a modern day horse and the splint bones would be right here. And this horse has a calcium deposit, which is this bump right here, and they're called splints. They can be removed um, along with the splint bone without any harm to the horse. And this here is known as a chestnut on a modern horse. It'd be located right above about where the knee is on a horse. And it's believed that this is what the third toe became. So it raised up in the leg and just became this. These grow um, over time. and they, you can just peel them off and they continue to grow. Okay, so the next one is the Perfalski's horse. And the Perfalski's horse is like very notable because it is considered the last true wild horse. Most horses today are ancestors of domestic horses. This horse is also considered to be the Mongolian horse and it stands about 48 inches tall. Um, and then finally, the most recent, we have the Equus. And this horse um, is the genus of all modern day horses. Um, on average, it stands about 13.2 hands in height as a pony. And just for y'all, so you know, a hand is four inches in height. Um, they have rigid spines, long noses and necks. Um, and you can see this in the skull here, how the nose has become elongated over time. Um, they also have high crowned um, and cemented teeth for grazing so that the soil, um, when the soil is rough on their teeth, it erodes, but they continue to, the tooth continues to come through so they don't like just erode away. Um, and the legs are fused together now so there's no rotation. And also their ankle bones are higher up which allows them to gallop and become faster. Okay, moving on to discuss the embryology of the horse foot because we were talking about them losing toes and like, you know, you're probably wondering where they went. Um, it was actually discovered that in the uh, modern horses, there are still three toes present, which resembles very similarly to the ancestral horses, which kind of leads people to believe that the basic genes of the ancestral horses just form, still form unchanged compared to the modern horses. And interestingly, um, some researchers actually studied both the modern and the ancestral embryos of horses, and eventually they um, pieced together like an entire timeline of uterine development, and they just, just, like I said, discovered that the development of the foot was very, very similar, with like a less than 2% error, I believe. And they did that by measuring the different um, parts of the foot and then the toes. And also, these horses, they share homologous structures with modern zebras and donkeys. So for a zebra and donkey, their limb structure would be the same. They would have a long cannon bone with a single digit and um, they, their teeth would also be um, crowned and cemented and long for grazing, which shows that they are also related to other um, four-legged mammals. And that's it. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're gonna do the video. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we showed y'all like the pictures over here of like what they would look like in an artistic drawing of it. And so now this video shows a timeline of the horse evolving. And if you watch carefully, um, and I can like go back and replay it too. If you watch the feet, you can really see the change in the toes as well as the ankle bone moving from the bottom where they could just like walk around in the forest to up top so that they can move and gallop more freely. Also, the um, skull gradually gets bigger and you can see that in the video. So this does play slowly, but as you can see in the background, there is the forest and it's just walking around. It's very small at this point 
and if you look right there, the ankle bone is towards the bottom of the foot. So it's moving, would you say, kind of more like a dog or something like yes, that in yeah. terms of its gait? So here we go. So it's getting bigger, and I'm going to pause it real quick. The ankle has now moved up more on the foot. The skull has also gotten bigger. And which one would that be? Would we think something close to it would be, be like that? That would be probably close to the mesohippus. The mesohippus. Um, because there's still, if you see at the bottom, there's about three-ish mm -hmm. toes. So that's where why we put it around there. And then it keeps going. Make a trot. Right here. <laughs> I know. So now you see this one, and it grows significantly again. And if you look at the bottom, this has moved up. So this is one of those toes that are going to move up and form the splint bones right there. And then the middle toe has elongated and become more predominant one that they walk on. Okay, so it changes again and now it's only got the single toe. The ankle bone has moved way up on the leg, and the skull has also gotten bigger. And do you believe? Also, if you notice the landscape in the bag, mm -hmm. right there, it is now a grassy plain versus the forest that they started out with. That is, that is, that is, so cool. <laughs> are there any questions? <laughs> Um, I want to just follow up on a couple of things because this is so cool. So about the embryo, I just think this is so neat. So Christina, will you kind of just say again what you were saying? So like they go through, a, are you saying like early in development? They yeah, like really early in development, they discovered that even modern horses do develop with three toes, like on all feet. But um, I read somewhere that they believe that the reason why they kind of disappear is because of a process called apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. So eventually, like, something triggers these cells to just stop forming, which eventually leads to the toes to stop forming. Mm -hmm. so that really does kind of make that connection yeah. with an ancestral trait. And when horses are born now, like, what, even when they come out, they have, like, finger-like looking um, soft structures on the edge of their hooves, which are there to protect, they're there to protect the, like, mother's uterus so that it doesn't scratch it when they come out. And so those chestnuts too that you're talking about, I think are so cool. So those do, those just keep growing just like even like a fingernail would, mm -hmm. right? Or so that's why like the hooves have to be filed down, right? Because they grow just like our fingernails. Um, any other questions? I think you all did a nice job. Thank you. Good work.